Next, James and Betty's grandson, Chris Turner, shares his passion for introducing people to the real Jesus, growing in freedom, and discovering purpose. My parents did such an incredible job instilling in us that not to let other circumstances and people's circumstances that you can't control affect your faith. You're on your own personal journey. And if we're not careful, we even, especially when it's someone that close to us, we like to apply other people's stories to us. joining us on Life Today. I'm Betty and this is James and we have one of our six grandsons with us today. Yeah. You know, so we, proud of him. We just keep having grandkids. <laughs> We've got 11 grandchildren, five granddaughters, six grandsons, and now we have four great grandchildren. We got three girls and one boy. So right, well, right now the girls are outnumbering the boys. So <laughs> I'm sure all these parents, and by the way, just for your information, of the 11 grandchildren, eight of them, married as of uh, November of this year. So that's, uh, and, and here's the beautiful thing. We, we, think, they're, we think they're all great grandchildren. Uh, I, I know we have great grandchildren now, but I told our grandchildren, you're all great. All, all 11 of <laughs> you've been great. So we've had great grandchildren since all of you were born, each one of you. But the thing about it is they married spouses that are absolutely incredible people. And, and uh, we, we think they're wonderful Christians <laughs> and love the Lord and they love each other and they're having fun and it just, it's just an answer to prayer, Betty, for us. Well, answered prayer sitting here. Our grandson, Chris Turner, is here. Would you welcome Chris Turner <laughs> to life today? Thank you. Thank you. Chris, I, uh, we, we had a, you know, a real serious uh, program with you talking about mom being in heaven. We lost our daughter, uh, our youngest daughter, and uh, it, it was tough. Uh, yeah. You spoke at the funeral, all three of you did, Willie George, Pastor, think about this, Church on the Move in Oklahoma, where he became our daughter's pastor and our grandchildren up there, the three grandchildren. And one of them is Chris, and Chris is here. Chris, you all spoke at the funeral, and uh, the children did, and Willie said, never in my life. Uh, I think he said then, you know, he'd been, uh, you know, he's, he'd been 40 years, I think he said, ministering, counting his ministry wow. before the church even started. He had the Willie George Ministries, right. reaching young people. And he said he'd never seen anything like all the way you all just got up and shared about what you'd seen mm -hmm. through, through, through your mother's life. But you went on a journey to where the Lord became such more, so much more real to you. Yeah. Now, would you have ever thought that you would end up right back in Broken Arrow <laughs> yeah. where you kids grew up, yeah. and there you are now, a pastor of a satellite branch church, a, a, mm -hmm. a church of, on the move that there where Willie George started it, now he's transferred the uh, leadership to his son, Wick. Yep. And you feel like that a very positive thing, right? I mean, you yes, love Wick like crazy, but you're real thrilled about Wick. Oh, I, I, love, I love the church I get to be a part of. Obviously, it's a place where um, my family has been able to invest a lot of our, our lives. And it's so cool to be able to go back and serve at that church and to uh, for Brittany and I to be able to give back. Um, and she, she's been attending the church there for about five years now. And for me to just be able to go go back and serve under that leadership. And um, I love our lead pastor. Witt is doing an incredible job and um, really like where we're headed. You were a real sports nut. You know, got <laughs> one state in football, <laughs> got in playoffs all the time, did great in baseball. It looked like that's where you're going to be. You went back and helped coach mm -hmm. there at the school. Yeah. How in the world you suddenly find yourself <laughs> moving over into a pastoral type of role and being a, a campus pastor? How, how do you explain that? I can't explain my journey from going to school for business and I, leaving with a finance degree, going to coach and teach at high school, and then suddenly ending up a pastor after. It's been an incredible uh, about five-year journey. Um, ending up where I am, and I, I think, I think God has just orchestrated my life in an unbelievable way, and um, I, I've tried to be willing to what He's called me to do, even when things maybe don't make sense on paper, and um, God, God has just been able to to move me exactly where He wants me to be, and to be able to go and 
pa and help pastor a church and start some a new campus with uh, new people and really help lead them has been a true honor, and I don't take it lightly. Well, you, you say new church, it's really new. Yeah, <laughs> we are. We're just a couple months in, and it's uh, so it's it's exciting and terrifying all at the same time. <laughs> Tell yeah. everybody where it's located in the Tulsa area, and you're in Broken Arrow. Yeah, so it's in um, Broken Arrow, in the heart of Broken Arrow, in downtown BA. It's kind of Broken Arrow scene, kind of a revitalized downtown. In fact, it's become actually nationally renowned for the way it's done. It's accomplished that. So it's a growing, thriving, kind of trendy area for Tulsa. And where are uh, you located in it? Where's the church? Um, it's uh, it's in a Broken Arrow Public School building. It's their performance performing arts center, and so we lease that. We get to we have a great group of people that set up and tear down at 5 a.m. on Sunday mornings, and uh, yeah, we have a great team there. All right, what do you want to see happen to the people who come to your church? You grew yeah. up in Church on the Move. You saw yeah. a Christian school where the pastor really wanted kids to to really be inspired. Yeah, your, your mom, our daughter Robin was so excited about you all going to school where she saw continual influence. Yeah. And she was a very active mom with all the kids, wasn't she? Yeah. And she helped the cheerleaders, she helped <laughs> the ball team. She was, uh, your dad, very supportive and been just such an awesome father. What do you want to happen in the church where you're ministering to people and you look at their situations? Do you see a lot of dysfunction in families that touches your heart? Do you yeah. see a lot of people uh, groping and looking, or do you see people who are like serious seekers? What do you yeah. What do you look at? How, how do you How do you relate to them? Yeah, so I think I think one thing that our lead pastor said whenever we launched our campus was he 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 said to the church, you know, we don't need another place to attend. Uh, in this area of the country, especially the Bible Belt, there's plenty of churches to attend. Our Our goal um, is to simply take people to a, just a deeper walk with Christ and really we want to see people transformed. Um, our vision that you can see, um, if you just look at our churches, uh, it, we want to introduce people to the real Jesus. And what we mean by that is we don't want this to just be about religion. We don't want this to just be about church attendance. And uh, we want to help people just really take steps on their journey um, to knowing God and, and growing in a relationship with Him. And so for us, what we want to see is that. We want to see movement towards Christ. Uh, we want to see real discipleship happen. And it's amazing that God has sent us some incredible people. And uh, we, we're we trying to just keep in our prayers and letting God trust us with those people because we're really stewards as pastor. These are God's people. And we, we just want to continue to pray that God would send us those people that are hurting, that are that are broken, that are struggling. And we want, we want to see those people come to know Christ. We uh, prayed for all of our children and grandchildren to find mm -hmm. the right person to fall in love with. <laughs> and so we got to track your journey. You know, it wasn't like we weren't yeah. praying for you. And mom's gone. We know mom's praying, <laughs> looking down here, we're praying. And here's this girl that is just a, a great praise uh, worship leader and a singer. <laughs> and uh, what what attracted you to her? She just this singer you see all of a sudden. What what, yeah. what caused this little connection to happen? Yeah, so <laughs> I was volunteering in youth ministry, which is where you go if you're single, right? You hope to maybe meet <laughs> another person around your age that is. Uh, serving people slightly younger than you. And so uh, <laughs> Brittany led, led worship that night and um, at our youth. And I had, I had actually joked with my sister. I met Brittany at this um, like church picnic thing a couple years before when I was still at Baylor. And I, um, I joked with Callie. I said, when I get back from school, I'm going to marry her. Just said it like it just kind of we we I mean, talked. She was for, working. They were working together. Yeah, they were working. They were sharing an office. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. And I mean, she blew me off several times. Yeah. Like, and I was kind of oh, like, yeah, yeah. "Who are you to blow me off?" Type of thing. <laughs> and so, um, anyways, I, I after that after a service on Wednesday night, I just asked her out, and she was like, "Yeah, I kind of I'll check my schedule thing." And I was like, "All right, well, great. Put it down for Tuesday." <laughs> and um, so we ended up going out, and uh, uh, that was pretty much it. <laughs> Was it just her singing? Is that what it did? I don't know what it was. I, maybe maybe it was how reluctant she was to go on a date with me, and uh, I guess I just found that as a challenge. Um, she showed up an hour late to our uh, first date, and I, so it was almost over immediately. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, your dad uh, tells us that she reminds uh, him of uh, his wife, our daughter, yeah. that she's... Uh, 
pretty good at keeping you, you know, in step. Oh, she keeps me in line. Yeah. 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 And you know what? It looks like the two of you really enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's been, been beautiful phenomenal. to watch. Yeah. Do you find yourself with your little girl already beginning to think about, I sure want to pray for her whole journey. Yeah. Because we started with our children when they were babies, began to pray, God, direct their steps. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know all the family, you know our kids. Yeah. Wouldn't you say God beautifully directed their steps? Uh, absolutely. And I think that's what's so cool about God is we we didn't even know, um, Brittany and I, we didn't even know if we were going to be able to have kids. Um, just with some, we knew some things going going in that may, may cause some, some problems some there. Some physical challenges. Yeah, there were some physical challenges. And uh, it was amazing just to get Ella <laughs> out of that. And to just it totally shocked us. And it's so cool because, I mean, even my own mom was a shock. Um, and a surprise, her ability. Total surprise, surprise and, baby. We could not have <laughs> his mom. And it's, it's crazy because I just really believe that God's a God of restoration. And for us, and for me personally, um, Ella has been a little bit of that is a little bit of restoration and maybe you lose someone you shouldn't have, but then you gain someone yeah, you shouldn't have. Right. And um, that's, that's how it's been for me. And I think God can turn real sadness and heartache yeah. into joy unspeakable. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's worth that relationship with him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to ask, uh, what do you remember when you think about mom? What did she leave? that made a real impression on you that you know you're gonna carry through in your ministry and all you do with your own family? You know, the thing I think, the, the best thing that she, that she instilled in us was just a great sense of diligence in your faith. Her circumstances never caused her to waver. God was God and it was just, and even so on the flip side of that, maybe being a little appalled that she did pass away um, is just God is God is God. And that circumstance, my parents did such an incredible job instilling in us and that not to let other circumstances and people's circumstances that you can't control affect your faith. You're on your own personal journey. And if we're not careful, we even, especially when someone that close to us, we like to apply other people's stories to us and I, there's some answers I don't know. There's some things I don't know. There's some things, even in the Bible, if you're not careful, you start to apply their stories to you, and that's not what it's really all about. Mm -hmm. All of that's pointing to God. All that's pointing, it's giving you a glimpse of the character of who He is. And so for me, the biggest takeaway from my mother is her incredible diligence um, in every season. Um, uh, God, God was God to her. <laughs> You know, let me let me close by just telling you this. Chris, we love you, and uh, we're so proud of you. Would you say thanks to Chris for being willing to Thank you, share? And, and, uh, I believe Chris is a, he's a very gifted, uh, gifted in so many ways. He's brilliant, and God's going to use him in a mighty way. There's no doubt. Already is the whole family. Um, Callie, you're just your doll. You're so much like your mom, <laughs> and what a great husband you got there. Grant, I'm just, I'm just rejoicing with you. And Cody, you know, I know you look like Papa a lot, and that's <laughs> got to be a tough old load to carry. <laughs> but I sure love you, buddy. And Holly, you're so precious. Mm -hmm. you, we just love you all. And Church on the Move, gosh, anybody looking for a church in the Tulsa area, go, go, go to Church on the Move. Go, go to the branch there in, in uh, uh, Broken Arrow and, and, and see Chris and the family. But you know, when when Robin left, uh, when we when she realized, um, doesn't look like I'm going home to the hospital. Uh, and we we all were the family was all there. The, the nurses and people commented, we've never seen a family like this. You remember? They said, we, we've never been anything like this. The love that filled the room it was just indescribable. <clears throat> but I, I looked at my little daughter and those big black eyes looking up at me. And uh, I heard it's just one of the most moving things I ever saw. Uh, Chris was, y'all had kind of gone to the room. I was kneeling down by, by Robin, holding her little hand, and, and Willie nearly, he just nearly lost it. He just nearly collapsed watching me with my daughter, you know, tell her goodbye. But here's what I want you to hear. <clears throat> I'm looking at Robin, <clears throat> and she's looking up at me in her big black eyes. And it was like, she said, you know, Dad, and she wasn't talking. I could just read, Dad, this is not the way. Uh, it is the way it's, that I thought it would be. And it didn't the way it ought to be. And 
pretty soon she wasn't able to look up and, you know, even communicate, but then she was gone. Now listen to me. Jack Hayford said, I've seen two visions where I could see vividly. Jack Hayford saw Robin go into heaven. He told me how meticulously and carefully he wrote the vision is incredible. And one of the things that really got me, he said, Robin had a, a look of bewilderment, maybe not confusion, but bewilderment on her face until she got closer and closer to the gates of heaven. And he said, I saw her countenance brighten. And I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. And he said, James, I saw her. I saw her go in. It was the most beautiful sight. And then I saw her look at all the other people that were coming. And he said, I looked in the distance and I could see others coming. And, and Chris, when I saw that, I said, God, let us invite everyone on this earth to experience the relationship with Jesus that they too can say, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah. And I want it to be millions. I don't want you to miss it. I don't want anybody to miss it. I don't know how heavy your heart is in some way, but I will tell you, if I could heal your heart, I would walk out and I would take your broken heart and I would heal it. Because God's love's in me. And there are healing hands and great surgeons, gifts from God. But there's a God who wants to heal your heart. He wants to hold you forever. And you'll be glad when they say, let's go into the house of the Lord because you've experienced the God, the Father of that house. Father, I pray this for everyone watching, that they'd come to know you and love you with all their heart. In Jesus' name. Chris, we uh, know that you told us in the earlier program that when you went to the mission field, it was a life-changing experience. Yeah. Our viewers, we're going to ask them again to help. Yeah. And you'll see you there when children are dying. Yeah. And if these viewers will help, yeah. those children won't die. Yeah. They will live. Yeah. Let's be praying. I want yeah. you to watch. And then I want you to do what God impresses you to do, please. Wait a minute. I can't get them to stop pressing in on us where I can even get to the suit. I mean, these people are hungry. I mean, the absolute desperation. I mean, I can't even feed them. Unfortunately, too many children know what happens when the food runs out. They know it will quickly become a desperate situation where they're fighting to survive. Children and their parents end up scavenging for anything to eat to fight off their gnawing hunger pains. And sometimes the children will even eat things that aren't considered food just to try and feel better. I'm sitting here with this little boy and when I came in, I noticed he was sitting here and uh, he's eating dirt. Uh, he's trying to fill his little stomach and he's trying to take that hunger away. It won't. I've never seen a child eat dirt. The impact of this type of food crisis is particularly devastating to the youngest victims. Once the effects of severe malnutrition set in, desperate parents will try and walk for miles to get help in a clinic. This is why we need your continued support for mission feeding because we do know that she's been here about a week now and if you can imagine that she's gotten better, she's improved, so if you can imagine a condition worse than this. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray over this little girl. I ask that you heal her in the name of Jesus. And I ask that we help all these kids in Jesus' name. You know, Chris, we were all in the room with your mom when she was, was leaving, and 
if somebody had been able to walk into the room and say, uh, Robin here, and give her something that she's perfect, wouldn't that have been an awesome thing? <laughs> and we would have all rejoiced. We know she's perfect now, Absolutely. praise the Lord. But, but Chris, there's a perfect cure for those little children. Yeah. We can get them before they get them into that last ditch effort in the yeah. clinics, which you pay for too. You, you are the ones that provide those clinics. But what we know works, Betty, is we feed them where we find the need and we organize them. The missionaries are so marvelous. And then we begin to feed them the nourishing uh, uh, porridge that is just really scientifically developed by caring individuals to meet the exact need. And it is the miracle cure. It works. It doesn't fail. It works. We can keep them from having to take their precious babies to the clinic for one last resort, one last little bit of hope. As I, as I think about those mothers and those children look in the eyes of their mothers and they say, why can't I have something to eat? A mother wants to provide every need for her child and it breaks their hearts when they can't but they need our help. We can make the difference. We can get the food to them and they can grow up healthy, wonderful children to their blessings to their mothers. So please help us. Please help us feed as many as needed. We love you for that. Thank you. You, you know, today we had our little granddaughter, Chris's little, little girl is so beautiful, little, little Ella, and, and we got to feed her. And she'd just smile and just thinking we were giving her what she, we could tell when she got hungry. She made it known, and she was so happy when she got food. And it was such a joy to us to have a part in that. Listen to me. This is the thing I want you to realize. You're reaching out with the arms and hands of Jesus. We, we are his body. You're actually reaching out and lifting up those little children, and then you give them what they need, and it's the perfect cure. It's not like praying for some miracle drug or some pharmaceutical miracle that will solve it. We, this is a nutritional reality. And we've been doing it now for 30 years. Millions and millions of children's lives saved. Now they are many of them leaders in their communities. Many of them are teachers. Many of them are ministers and witnesses for Christ. Millions of them. But it all came because somebody like you watching Life Today said, I'm going to take care of three children or five or 10, 30, 50, or $100. We can care for three, five, or 10 children the next months. Now we just have a short time left to raise the funds for the 400,000 children we've reached out to now. And we've got in place and we've told them we're going to care for them. But it all depends upon your love, God's love through you. Would you right now please get up, get your bank card or get a check, make it to life or take that card and go online or dial the number and just use that bank card like a check and make the gift God puts on your heart. You could give $1,000 and feed 100 kids. That'd be wonderful. 100 will feed 10. Whatever you can do. And I always ask you to, to think big. I mean, if you could touch 100 children, do it. But remember, if it's three and that's what you can do, look what it does for those three and for the mothers. Thank you so much. We have some gifts we're going to send you to say thank you. One of them is the great story of the mission feeding and the founder, Peter Pretorius. It is an incredible book. You won't be able to put it down. Thank you so much right now for going online or dialing the number. In impoverished and drought-stricken areas of Africa, children are suffering. The need is great. And without food, they face severe malnutrition, even death. Through Life's Mission Feeding Outreach, you can save lives by feeding and caring for children currently suffering in parts of Angola, Mozambique, and South Sudan. With previous reserves gone and Mission Feeding helping in areas with severe crop failure, we urgently need your support to replenish food supplies to reach the 400,000 children who are counting on us. Your life-saving gift of $30, $50, or $100 will help feed and care for three, five, or 10 children for three full months. With your gift of any amount, we'll send you Death Defying Faith, The Extraordinary Life of Miracle Man Peter Pretorius. This autobiography, completed just days before his unexpected death, chronicles the thrill-seeking adventures of missionary Peter Pretorius. You will love reading how God took this ordinary man and performed extraordinary miracles throughout all of Africa. 
With your gift of $100 or more, request a beautiful Faith and Hope pen set. Two beautifully crafted pens featuring the key words of Hebrews 11.1, 1, a key verse for every believer, especially when facing adversity, trials, and challenges. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request a Bridge of Faith framed canvas print by Thomas Kincaid. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. This is my first time overseas. It's my first time leaving the country. And uh, to say there's been some eye-opening experiences and some levels and degrees of shock would be an understatement. The malnutrition clinics, those have been um, by far some of the toughest things I've seen. Looking at the mother of the child and just knowing what it feels like to be in that position of helplessness is the hardest part. There's nothing that you can do right then and there and you want to fix it. So to be able to see the productive feedings that LOI has helped provide to these villages so we keep them out of the clinics is good to see. And just because you're not here handing a bowl to a kid doesn't mean that you're not actually feeding them because these kids can't survive without you. We can't be here without you to help them. And when you see the kids smile when they get food and you see them happy and you just see them so grateful, they're grateful for you. You know, I want to just say thanks uh, for letting me just kind of open up and tell you a little bit more about our sweetheart daughter mm -hmm. and to have her son here, oldest son, and the other beautiful children, Cody and Callie, I love you all so much. To all of you, just thank you. And uh, we want to send you death-defying faith, and hopefully we'll live that way. But boy, you sure have blessed us, and you, you blessed me by letting me know I can open up my heart to you and you'll help me hold my heart, my wife's heart. You've had your arms around us a long time and you put your arms around a lot of people and we say thank you. Would you join us saying thanks to Chris Turner for being here? Thank you, you bud. I hope a lot of people go visit the church. Uh, me too. Thank all of you. God bless you. I wish I could do more for Life Outreach International, but I'm saving for retirement. We have a plan that can help you do both. Contact Life Planning Services today. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts.